What's going on guys, this is ETA Prime back here again. Today I am back with the Clockwork Pie game shell and I want to do a little bit of a modification. So I've been reading over the forums and some people are having trouble with the CPU overheating. It's a modular design and it's inside of a case. No heat sink at all on a 1 gigahertz all winter quad core CPU. So I've actually experienced the overheating after playing for a little while. Now I absolutely love this handheld and if you haven't seen my other videos I'll leave links in the description. But what happens is the CPU reaches a certain temperature and then underclocks itself. This will decrease performance of the game shell and it's kind of annoying. Plus I've actually reached the thermal threshold where the whole unit shut down because it just got too hot. It couldn't cool itself anymore. Instead of cutting a hole in the main board's case and adding a heat sink, I'm going to go a different route. Now I'm using 26 gauge copper here. This is for like jewelry makers and stuff like that. I also have some thermally conductive tape here. Now this is my favorite stuff in the world. I've already went through a roll just like this for my Raspberry Pis and other single board computers doing experiments with different heat sinks. I absolutely love this tape. And finally, some Kapton tape. We're gonna be needing this to cover the copper so it doesn't hit anything else on the board itself. Now the method I'm gonna go with here will cover the whole main board with a piece of copper. Your Wi-Fi range will be decreased because this will be covering up the Wi-Fi chip. You can cut a smaller piece of copper, it should work just fine, or you could cut a hole where your Wi-Fi chip is in the copper sheet we're going to use on the back. It's really up to you. Now I'm on the third floor of my house, all my Wi-Fi equipment is on the first floor, and without the copper I get about a 68% reading from the Wi-Fi. Uh, within the settings on the game shell. With the copper, I get a 42% reading. It's still totally usable for me. The only thing I use Wi-Fi for on here is to transfer ROMs anyway. But if you're really worried about it, either cut a hole for the Wi-Fi chip or use a smaller piece of copper. I'm going to go ahead and tear this unit down. When doing this, there are still risks involved. You could always short something out on the board and burn your game shell up. Follow this at your own risk. If you damage your game shell, any of your personal property, or yourself, I am not responsible for it whatsoever. I'm just showing you what I did to cool my game shell down. I really do love the idea of the game shell, and it works pretty well for what it is. It hasn't been out very long, and a lot of updates have been put out, but it's still not all the way there. There is some sound issues in some emulators and a little bit of glitch in here and there, but overall, I think this is going in the right direction. So here's the main board. This is what we need to cool. Well, we need to cool the CPU, which is an all winner R16J CPU. While we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and cool the RAM off too because it's right beside the CPU and it's gonna be easy to do. There are several ways to go about this. You can cover the whole front of the board. You can find a way to bend it around to the backside. You can cover half of the board. As long as we have some of that copper taking heat from the CPU, we should be good to go. Since this will still be enclosed after we add this heat sink, there is a chance it could still overheat. I'm going to tell you right now it's going to take a lot longer to overheat than it would if you didn't. I haven't run into any issues. I've already done this as of recording this video. I have had no overheating issues or shutdown issues whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and cut this copper here. I can just use some heavy duty scissors. If you have a Dremel tool, that'll also work. Make sure you wear safety glasses when you do something like this. I'm going to cut it to the size of the board. If I was you, I would go ahead and measure it out, mark it off, and then cut it from there. But I'm not you, and I'm just going to go ahead and hack this thing up. I'm going to set it right on the side, grab my scissors, and start cutting away. Now I do have a Dremel tool I can clean this up with later, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now if you want to go only over half of the board, that should work well also. You won't cover up that Wi-Fi and there's no need to cut a hole or anything like that. You can just make sure that it goes on half the board over the CPU and the RAM. We're going to be using our thermally conductive tape and our Kapton tape. I'm sure there's better ways to cut this copper, but I got these nice scissors here and it seems to be working pretty well. It will kind of bend the edges out, so that's why I suggest using a Dremel of some sort. You can always flatten this back out, but I want to kind of keep it looking as nice as possible. It is 24 gauge copper and you can bend it very easily with your fingers. We're going to make sure it kind of matches up here. And it looks like it's going to cover that board just fine. 
I'm going to grab my Dremel tool. I'm going to round the edges off and just clean it up real good. Just take your time with it. You can make it look pretty decent. I'm going to try to clean it up, get all these fingerprints off. We're almost ready to mount it to the board. And to do that, we're going to be using that double-sided thermal adhesive tape. It works really well. I'm going to kind of roll this out and try to flatten it out as best as possible. I don't think it looks too bad. If you took your time, you can make it look a lot better than this. I'm going to make sure that it fits on the main board. And yes, around each edge, there's a little bit of board still sticking out or PCB still sticking out. That's exactly how I wanted it to sit on here. So I didn't want to throw it on here just like this. We kind of want to block the back of the copper so it doesn't hit anything else on this board and short anything out. That's where the Kapton tape comes in. But first, we need to get this mounted up. I'm going to grab some of this here. And like I mentioned, links for everything will be in the description if you want to try this yourself. I think I'm going to fold this over. It still works great with two layers, just to have it come up a little higher than that Wi-Fi module that's soldered to the board. We'll take it off of here. I want to cut it down to fit the size of the CPU and the RAM on the main board. Just kind of eyeball it here. Go ahead and measure all this stuff, guys. Don't be afraid to measure. So we want this to sit in the correct location on the copper. I'm going to place it on the board first, right on the CPU and RAM. I'm not going to put it down on there hard yet. I'm just going to kind of lay it over. And I'm going to push my copper on. I want to line everything up correctly before I push it on. And it's going to stick to the copper. That's the exact spot we need this tape to be. It's time to add the capped on tape. This will prevent the copper from shorting out anything else on the board. This stuff is kind of hard to work with if you're not using gloves or really sharp scissors, but I think we can get this done. Now I'm going to be using a lot more than I really need. I bought a 10 pack of this stuff and I got plenty of it. I'm just going to line the whole backside of this copper sheet with some capped on tape, avoiding the area where I have the thermal tape at. I'm also going to make sure there's a little overlapping on the sides after I cut it. That way I can kind of fold it over. I'm going to fast forward this. You just want to make sure you have all that copper covered. I left a little overhang on each edge so I could fold it over and I'm not going to have any sharp edges on this copper plate or this copper sheet here. Just kind of fold it over. You could just line the whole both sides with this if you'd like to, avoiding your thermal tape, but we do have a clear back on it and I kind of want it to look nice. That copper showing through should look pretty good. Now all we need to do is place it on our main board. Make sure we line it up correctly and we're going to press it on down. Now when you put this back in the shell, you could add a little double-sided sticky tape to hold it, but I think it's going to be just fine. It's a little thicker now, and when you put this case together, it should hold everything in place. And I think it looks pretty decent. You could polish the back of this if you'd like to. I'm just going to clean it up before I put everything back together. It actually fits in the mainboard case way better than I thought it would. You want to make sure you put everything in correctly. It should snap closed. And it's not blocking any of the connectors or anything like that because it's on the back side. But like I mentioned, it is still encased in plastic, so there is a chance it could still overheat, but it's going to take a long, long time to overheat this CPU with this on here. Assembly of these units is straightforward. If you were able to get one on Kickstarter, you got all the instructions you need to put it back together. If you're interested in picking one of these up, they are not for sale just yet, but you can sign up on their website for the wait list, and I'll leave a link in the description. The moment of truth, we're going to go ahead and boot this thing up. I think it looks pretty cool in the back here. 
make sure we can get power and you'll still be able to see the LED from the very top I don't know if you can see it blinking there or not and it works I didn't short anything out I think it's gonna work really really well so that's pretty much it for this video guys I really appreciate you watching one of the main things was when I was trying to transfer you know large files over my network to the game shell while the governor was set to performance I would have it shut down every once in a while I just transferred about six PS1 games over my network and it didn't shut down at all. You can still feel the heat coming off of the copper and that's exactly what we want. We want that copper to soak up as much heat from the CPU and the RAM chip as possible. This is gonna work out great. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you turn notifications on so you know when I upload my next video. And like always, thanks for watching.